We're testers. Hey, we're testers. This is Duke 4005 back with another performance review. This, guess what, is another Adidas running performance review. If you're wondering why I keep doing Adidas running, it's because they keep sending me Adidas running shoes. This one is going to be on the Adidas Alpha Bounce. This is a shoe that came absolutely out of nowhere. Um, I'd seen some articles, some shadings heading leading up to this release, but nothing firm on what this shoe was until the day of release. Um, luck would have it. I had a pair on my doorstep that day to get into the review. It was probably about three weeks ago, I believe. So I've put it through the ringer pretty good. If you've kept up with my Instagram, you know the kind of workouts I did with this. It wasn't strictly running. It was also a workout, lifting weights, uh, jumping rope, plyometrics, those kind of things. So I put it through a really good test and I think it held up really well, but there's only one thing you're, you're gonna be able to see, and that's the performance review to find out. So stay tuned, wear testers, and let's okay, get into so it. so first things first here, wear testers, we're gonna get into the traction. And the traction on this sole is really thin, as you can see. It goes back to kind of the nubby pattern like we got with the Ultra Boost and the Ultra Boost ST and the Ultra Boost Uncaged. But it's formed in this little pressure map here, as you can see, it goes where the foot is gonna map it's going to land and it's going to roll into transition. It's a little bit thicker in those areas and thinner in these areas that are on the outside of the foot and on the inside of the rear of the uh, rear foot that you don't really hit on unless you just got some stride deficiencies. Um, it's made out of a, a hard rubber. Uh, I'm sure it's a poly blend or something on the bottom. I don't know, it, but it's it's a thicker, harder rubber than what you get on the Ultra Boost. However. It's still not like a running shoe outsole. It does show wear rather quickly. You can see on this side, uh, this is just from three weeks, probably, um, I don't know, it's anywhere from 10 to 12 miles per week, plus some weight lifting and some casual wear. And as you can see, it's already wearing off the color here. Not much of the texture is gone, but the color is gone. However, the grip on this thing is fantastic. Um, dry roads, wet roads, you know, any kind of gravel or anything, I had no problems with any kind of traction. Uh, lifting weights, you know, doing leg press, it, it held on the plate perfectly. Um, outsold for that, you know, as long as the longevity is there, I can't tell you yet, I've only put three weeks in them, but I can tell you just as long as the longevity is there, this outsole works great. Okay, next we'll roll from the traction into the cushioning. And as you can see, this is called the Alpha Bounce and there's a reason for that. It uses bounce cushioning, just like we saw in the D Lillard 2 this year and the Rose, um, 773.4 or whatever it was called, the team shoe for Rose this year. Uh, Bounce, if you're not familiar with it, is not the same as Boost. It is a foam and it is fairly responsive, but it's more of a giving foam, an absorbent foam, than what you get in Boost. Okay, now whereas the Boost foam allows you to sink and then it bounces back and responds after a certain point of sinking into it, it gives you the absorption and then the energy return theoretically. Um, energy return to me means you get all of your energy back into your legs and you're not as tired and it, it makes your legs feel better. I don't get that out of boost, but I do get less fatigue in the boost. Uh, the bounce, however, is just more of an absorbent foam where the energy hits it, you sink into it, and it disperses. It doesn't give any feedback back into the foot or into the leg. Uh, some people like that, some people don't. It's up to you what you prefer. Uh, neither one is, um, I, I prefer the boost personally. Neither one is a bad, a bad setup. But just try them on and see which one you like better. Okay, from the and maybe you can we'll go into the materials of the upper. And the materials on this are called a forged mesh. It's a new material for the upper. It's made just especially for this shoe. Well, I shouldn't say especially. This is the first shoe that had it. And what they do is, again, they use the pressure mapping of the foot to find out the high stress areas. And you can see one right here on the lateral side where they put these like shark gills in. And then they uh, thin it out in the areas where you don't really need a lot of support, like over the toe box. Um, is it any different than any other mesh? Uh, it, it doesn't perform any differently, but man, it does feel really cool and really good on the foot. Um, the tongue is this one piece kind of booty system here. You could go without these overlays on the side. They're just here more for a kind of a structural sh support, but uh, it's, it's a really unique construction and I really do like this material on the upper. It seems to be really durable and I keep saying really an awful lot, a really, really a lot. Um, I'm just, I'm sorry, I just, I really like this material. See, I said it again. Um, now, is it better than Prime Knit? That's, again, up to you. Um, I like the Prime Knit better. It has a little more ventilation, 
but the Forge Mesh does feel a little bit more durable than the Prime Net. Okay, as far as fit on the Alpha Bounce, um, I got true to size because number one, I didn't have a choice, that's what they sent me. And number two, I like a little bit of room here in the toe. I got my normal 10 and a half, which is what I wear in everything, Ultra Boost, Nike, everything. Um, and I've got about this much room from the end of my toe to the end of the shoe. You could easily go a half size down on this shoe and be just fine. It's very wide footer friendly. The Forge Mesh is a little stiffer right here, but it allows for some stretch. So your foot will feel fine once you get it in there. Uh, now heel, um, heel fit. There is a little bit of heel slip, even as tight as I could pull these laces, this last hole, there is some heel slip in here. And I think it's got more to do with the fabric, this really silk smooth liner, than it does with the, uh, the actual design of the shoe. Um, admittedly, the heel counter is non-existent. This is your heel counter here, so you're not getting much support and much pull down into that heel to keep your foot locked in. And the tab right here is really just kind of a soft, you know, pliable piece of forge mesh and again, that liner. There's not much foam. There's a little bit here around the ankle to kind of mold in. But other than that, there's just not much there to hold your foot in. Okay, on the subject of fit, I see a lot of arguing about half size up, half size down, what's true, what's not true. Um, again, it, it just depends on what you like. Me personally, I've always been taught you need about a thumb's width at the end of the shoe because at the end of a long run, end of a workout, you're gonna have some foot swelling, you're gonna have some fatigue. On top of that, if your foot's not fitting well on the shoe here, and you slide around while you're running or stepping playing basketball, you're gonna slam it into that toe box and it's gonna hurt your toenails and hurt your, uh, your feet. Um, that's just my preference. I know some people like them just to be like a one-to-one one -one skin tight fit. If that's the case with this shoe, go a half size down, you'll be good. All right, next up we'll get into support. And again, the support structures on this shoe are very minimal. We've already talked about the heel cup and the, and the counter and there's just, there's not one. You've got this little overlay TPU piece here that holds a little bit of the heel in. As far as midfoot support, uh, there's, you know, it's, you can bend it straight out in the midfoot. Again, that's not a bad thing. It makes the shoe lighter, it makes it more flexible, makes transition easier, just makes for a smoother ride on certain shoes, this being one of them. However, the lacing system is really basic and it's just basically a slide your foot in the shoe and, and tighten it up and there's not much support coming from the laces either. If you're not a very technical runner who has a very strong gait and a very strong stride, this shoe is probably not going to be for you if you want to run lots of distance. Um, going that route, I don't know that I'd recommend this shoe for lots of long distance runs in the first place, so you'll be fine if you just want to run it, you know, two, three miles at a time. Um, you've got a rather neutral gait, rather easy stride. This shoe will work for you just fine the way it is with no support structures at all. Okay, so that wraps us up on the Adidas Alpha Bounce. Again, priced at $100. It's really a very much a steal. Um, you get full length bounce cushioning. And if you watched our uh, review of the D. Lillard 2, you know how much we love the bounce cushioning. Um, the materials themselves are very innovative. I don't know about the performance of it, but I know the science and the technology behind it was very innovative. Um, the foot mapping that they used on this was something that had never been done before, especially on the sole and along this midfoot. So you're paying a little bit for the technology that they used to design this shoe, not so much the performance. However, the colorways are coming out. This silhouette is just almost a classic already from Adidas. And it's, it's I mean, I'm gonna say it from a performance standpoint, it's a hot shoe right now. I mean, uh, this colorway, some, I've heard some love, heard some hate, which is exactly what you want. You don't want any middle of the road thoughts on a shoe. You want the public to love it or hate it and have really strong feelings about it. That way you get your feedback of either purchasing, not purchasing, know which way you're gonna go. Uh, performance wise, again, if you're a neutral runner, if you're a short distance runner, if you're looking for a new shoe for the gym, for weightlifting, for cross training purposes, this shoe could fit your needs. Definitely check it out. If you're a long distance runner that, uh, you know, need some more support, a little more technical runner, like, you know, a Brooks Beast or Adidas uh, Supernova Glide, that type of series, you're probably going to look elsewhere because this shoe is not going to be what you're looking for. Again, I, I know this technology is not just a one shot. I've already heard they've got the Alpha Bounce 2 or a certain shoe of the series continuing coming out um, for Spring 17. Uh, so I know they're not giving up on this, you know, a one-timer and then, you know, hit it and quit it and be done with it. So, again, Alpha Bounce, very nice. Thank you again to Adidas Running. 
Uh, next up, I've got the Ultra Boost Uncaged, I've got the KD9, and I've got the Jordan Superfly 5 that I've already got in. I'm going to try to get that out before the August release date in the United States. So, wear testers, stay tuned. This is Duke, and I'm out.